everyone, Zach here from Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a quick look at Microsoft's second feature drop for Windows 11 version 22H2, also known as the Moment 2 updates internally. This feature update includes a number of notable new features and enhancements. Uh, which Microsoft is delivering on the fly. This is kind of how Microsoft updates Windows 11 now instead of waiting for the annual feature update in the fall. Microsoft just rolls out new features every now and then alongside uh, Patch Tuesday, although starting today you can actually get this update early just by heading to Windows Update and installing the optional update that's waiting there for you. So yes, let's waste no time. Let's dive straight in and take a look at what is new. Starting with, you may have already noticed it, the taskbar. Microsoft has updated the search button. It's no longer a button. It's more like an actual search text box. So I can click down here and as you can see, uh, I can now begin typing search queries into here. So I can type for Windows Central. Uh, and the text I type is inputted into the box on the taskbar rather than into a search bar along the top here. That functionality is still there if you want it. So if you right click on the taskbar here uh, and go into uh, taskbar settings, you can see we have a bunch of different options here for what we can see on the taskbar for search. So by default, it's now set to search box. Uh, but there's also the option for search icon and label, which is like a sort of pill shaped smaller button, which does not allow text to be inputted directly into the button, but does bring back the uh, the search box along the top here. And once again, we can use that to type like normal and that will deliver the same results. Just the text is now being inputted at the top of the interface rather than via the taskbar. And then we also have here, we have the search icon, which is the sort of classic search magnifying glass that Windows 11 first shipped with. Uh, and then we can have, of course, no icon at all, which is my personal preference because I don't see the point when we have the search bar here within start. You may have also noticed that the actual search bar design has slightly changed as well. Previously, it was a sort of rectangle with rounded corners. It now has completely rounded sides. It's more like a very long peel shape. Uh, and that's kind of what they're doing slowly but surely all over Windows is making anything that relates to search a peel shaped uh, text field rather than uh, a rectangle one with rounded corners. But there you are, that's a quick look at the updated search options. Additionally, Microsoft is announcing that um, Bing Chat is a, kind of coming to Windows Search. Now, it's not super integrated. Microsoft is making a bigger deal about this than they need to, I think. But basically, if you lo load up this sort of landing page, you will see prompts for Bing Chat. And uh, you can click into those and sort of dive straight into Bing Chat if you'd want. Uh, the chat AI stuff is not integrated into Windows Search. So searching using this interface will just bring up normal results. You will not get any AI here it's simply the landing page you will be able to quickly launch into bing chat via microsoft edge uh, to get started using that if you want to do it uh, and that's just something that's new with the windows 11 uh, feature drop for february slash march so there you are that's a quick look at improvements to windows search now if we move right along microsoft has also updated the um teams chat interface it's now a little bit more um cohesive i think is the best way to describe it so if you jump in here you'll see we have a new landing page which automatically <laughs> there i am hi automatically shows you your camera as well as let's see if we can angle that better there we go enjoy my uh my comfortable hoodie here uh you can see your face and, and your your um, webcam as well as options to instantly start a meet now call so if you want to quickly jump into a chat with other people using teams chat you can do so you can also start a call and um, you can also create a new chat. And then below that here, we have our contacts. You can also turn off your webcam here if you're feeling ugly like I am today. Uh, so if we go down here, we can click on Synced Contacts. Now, previously, clicking into a chat through this interface would open up a separate app in a window somewhere else on the desktop. And it was kind of a clunky experience. But now, if you click on this, the actual chat exists within this flyout, which makes so much more sense. And I can begin typing, hello there, how are you? Uh, and this interface just exists within the fly out now. And honestly, I think it's actually much nicer. It's almost to the point where I'd recommend using it. So that's pretty awesome. Up here, of course, we get options to quickly jump into a video call, audio call, and then we can actually pop out the chat into the old interface here, which is powered by the Teams client itself. Uh, and that is pretty fancy. So there you are. That is a quick look at the new Teams or the updated Teams chat interface on Windows 11, which I actually much prefer and... Uh, is kind of getting good now, which is, is surprising to say. Okay, moving right along, if we jump over to the widgets panel, the widgets panel now has a full screen button. Yes, you can now make the widgets panel full screen. So if you're using Windows on a tablet, this may make a little bit more sense. 
It is uh, not the most performant area of Windows, let me tell you. You can see we're dropping frames quite a bit here. But the, the full screen experience does make it a lot more immersive, which is really nice. Uh, in addition to that, we also have uh, support for third party widgets now. So I don't have any installed here, but if you have apps installed on Windows that do include a widget, you will see them in here now, such as Spotify and Facebook Messenger. And to add them to your widgets board, is, all you have to do is simply, as I mentioned, click on this plus button and then simply click on one of the apps here you want to add. So for example, I can add sports here and uh, that will add to my widgets panel like so, which is pretty fancy. And there's also a few new options for the widgets panel. Uh, we have the option to turn off the open on hover option, which I think is fantastic. We can also turn off notification badges and turn off show announcements. So if you don't want to see any sort of headline updates down here, like uh, stock alerts or whatever else, you can turn all that off and uh, just have it be a weather button, which is pretty fancy. So there you are. That is a quick look at the updated widgets panel. Pretty nice. Now, if we move over to the opposite side of the taskbar down to the system tray overflow menu, this thing has been updated as well. I realize it's a very minor part of Windows, but it's important because this does actually change the functionality of it ever so slightly. So, of course, previously, you could drag and drop uh, icons between the taskbar and this overflow menu just by simply dragging up and dragging down. That's still kind of possible, but now you have to be a little bit more precise with how you do that. So if I want to pin, for example, OneDrive to the taskbar, I can't just drag it down here. I have to I have to actually make sure I drop it into this sort of little arrow here, let go, and that will pin it. Same goes for the other ones here. So I can do that. And then I believe I can reorganize them just by doing this like so. There we are. And that works as you would expect. Now to unpin, it's the same process. I can't just drag up anymore. That doesn't work. I have to actually drop it back into the overflow arrow here. So if I go there, then I can unpin and that will work as so. And of course, you can see these little animations now that are involved, which is really quite nice. Uh, and yes, of course, the, the interface up here is slightly updated as well. Uh, it's all using modern code now, which is why this behavior is slightly different. And you can also customize this interface through the um, settings app as well. So if we go up here, and go down to system tray icons, you can turn things on and off through this interface. So if I wanted Teams to be there down, for example, I could do that and then turn it off. And that's how that works. Additionally, you can now even hide the overflow menu itself. So if I don't want this little arrow down here to be present, I can simply come up here and turn it off entirely. And now we no longer have access to that overflow menu. Of course, the apps that were in that menu are still there. I just can't access them anymore because, um, well, the menu's gone, uh, but I can turn them on and off through here still. So if I wanted OneDrive to be there, I could still have OneDrive there if I wanted. So that is a interesting addition and awesome for those of you who like to keep your taskbar super clean and super tidy and having that overflow icon is kind of annoying. So yes, you can now turn that off if it's something you don't like. Up next is a big update for tablet users. Microsoft has introduced a new tablet optimized taskbar that activates whenever you're using Windows on a tablet or two-in-one device. So I'm using Windows on a two-in-one device here. Currently I'm in laptop mode, so the taskbar looks normal. However, if I flip it into um, the tablet mode here, you'll see a few things change. So immediately the taskbar got bigger and that's to make it easier to use with a finger so i can now touch these icons much easier uh, as well as the system tray icons down here as well of course we still have the gestures those aren't new we can swipe up from the bottom here to open start swipe up from the corner to open quick settings and swipe in from the right or left to open notifications or the widgets panel which might i add works much better in full screen on a tablet but if we open up an app here, you'll notice that uh, the taskbar will now minimize. It sort of gets out the way, and that's to sort of mimic the tablet experience you might get on an iPad or uh, an Android tablet, where the app is, takes priority. It's more or less a full screen experience on a tablet, and you can now have that same experience here on Windows. You still get your time in the bottom right, as well as uh, status icons for battery, Wi-Fi, volume. Uh, and if you want to get access to the taskbar again, you can simply just swipe up on it and that will bring up your pinned and running apps as well as the weather button if you want to get access to that as well. Uh, of course, you can do the whole swipe up thing completely to jump straight into start. So there's no two step process there. No matter where you are, if you want to get up to access to start, just simply swipe up and you can access it like so. If you want to access just the taskbar, you just do a little swipe up and that will just bring up the taskbar dock. So that is pretty nice. Of course, you know, running apps in Windows still does work. If you prefer doing that on a tablet, you can, of course, have multiple apps running here. So let's open up, say, the Microsoft Store as well. We can have those snapped side by side and the taskbar will remain out of the way until you swipe up on it to get access to it. So that is pretty awesome. 
Uh, so let's actually remain in tablet mode for this next demo. Let's take a look at some updated inbox apps, starting with the task manager app, which now has uh, a little search bar along the top. Uh, and this is a new addition to the task um, manager. So you can now jump in here and um, search for running processes. So if we wanted to search for, say, uh, Explorer, because I know Explorer is running. There we go. Then I can end that task or restart the task straight through this interface quickly and easily without having to scroll through the entire list of um, running uh, applications, which you can see here. Explorer is usually at the bottom because, I don't know, it usually is. Uh, whereas now you can just search for it and find it straight away, which is pretty nice. If we jump into the start menu here uh, and go into Notepad, Notepad now has tabs. Just like the File Explorer, we can now have multiple uh, text files running in a single window, which is pretty awesome. So we can jump in here and say, hey there. This one can be, what's up? And you can see the tabs change depending on what's the actual, what text is in the, the text file or depending on the text file uh, title, uh, file title, of course. Lastly, if we jump back into uh, the apps list here and go down to an app called Snipping Tool. Well, I did that wrong. Let's do that again. Go down to Snipping Tool. You can see there is now the option for screen recording. So if we click on New here and select an area to record about the whole thing. Curiously, we can't select the whole screen, which is quite frustrating. So we'll just do that there and start recording. Got Countdown. We can now open an app and put that in the little square box. So let's make that smaller so it fits. There we go. We are recording this here, which is pretty fancy. Can you go away? Thank you. Let's go to there. Let's do that. Sweet. And then we can stop that. And there we are. We have a screen recording. So yes, Windows now has a native screen recorder built in to the snipping tool. No longer do you need to download a third party app to do that. It's just built in now and uh, it works quite nicely. Now, if we jump into settings, there's also a new option for energy recommendations. We go down to power uh, and battery, which is there. So yes, if we click on energy recommendations here, you'll see that we now have a bunch of different recommendations for making your PC more energy efficient with a one click button here to apply all the settings Windows thinks you should apply to achieve that goal. Microsoft is also adding a quick access sort of toggle within the quick settings panel for initiating AI powered uh, Windows Studio effects on devices that support them. So currently this only works on the Surface Pro 9 5G and other uh, Windows and ARM devices powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8CX Gen 3. Uh, this should be coming to other devices and other uh, chips at some point as well, not just Qualcomm. But here it is, this is what it looks like. You can now jump in here and turn on things like um, background blur, eye correction, and other stuff powered by uh, AI uh, on devices that support this. So most people were using Windows today will not have access to this because most people aren't using a PC that actually supports this functionality. But if you are, such as the Surface Pro 9 5G, this is now in the quick settings panel. Now, lastly, I want to quickly mention Phone Link is getting support for iOS, which is quite a big deal. If you're an iPhone user, you'll soon be able to link your phone with your Windows PC using Microsoft's built-in Phone Link app. Now, unfortunately, this is only in preview and it's in limited preview as well. So not everybody's going to get access to this at first. It's only available for Windows Insiders starting now. Uh, and within that group, only a select amount of th those users will be getting access to it. So if you don't have access to it today, that's kind of expected only a few people are getting it but over time more and more people get access to this and uh, yes you can now sync your iphone notifications messages and calls using this app you can't do things like screen share and stuff that's that's android exclusive and also it requires bluetooth whereas the android version kind of doesn't it requires a companion app on the android device itself the iphone just uses bluetooth so uh, the functionality may differ slightly there but other than that, that is basically a quick look at the Windows 11 version 22H2 Moment 2 feature drop for February slash March 2023. I really wish Microsoft would name these updates, but they don't. So you're just going to have to wing it with names and months and whatnot. But yes, thank you so much for watching and we shall see you in the next one. Bye bye.